the 2003 Ford Excursion diesel with the tricolor amber tail turn light conversion. So the reason I do this mod is with having just the rear red, um, I think adding that yellow turn has more visibility, separate um, yellow turn signals. The brake light and tail light is activated independently on its own, as well as the turn signal can be blinking yellow at the same time your brake lights are on instead of just stopping and having that red um, brake light turn on and off as the signal. So that's how I prefer it, just to have um, function. So this is how to change the excursion from an all red brake, tail, and turn to the 1994 Ford Econoline van where they had the tricolor, the amber or yellow, and then the red started. Okay, one of the first things you'll need is you'll actually need to buy that 92-94 Ford Econoline tail light, that tricolor, the amber or yellow for the turn, and then the red for the tail and brake. So go ahead and grab yourself a set of those and just a few other wiring items that you'll need. So here is the tricolor tail light. You'll see that you've got the reverse light at the bottom, you've got your turn or your brake and your tail light in the middle, and then the turn signal up at the top, because it's just a two wire. Um, this plug right here, you'll need to also get. So you'll need to get the actual bulb holder as well as the clip. Uh, if you get to the junkyard to get the tail light, go ahead and snip that as well. Um, otherwise you're gonna be having to source this connector as well. But so for this upgrade, you'll need the whole tail light assembly as well as that turn um, bulb holder. <music> For the wiring you'll need to get to is a multifunction switch. So the switch that works with the turn signal, that for the Fords, it converts a signal, single brake light uh, feed into the turn signal to then dual the turn signal and brake. And that happens at the multifunction switch for the turn signal. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and take off this access panel at the bottom, and then we'll get into how to wire or rewire this multifunction switch. So it's pretty simple. We'll just need to get a few of these screws. So a couple of screws here to be able to get this cover panel off. So we'll need to take the lower and the upper. This will unscrew. And with those other screws at the bottom, we'll be able to separate this uh, plastic cover. So there's one more step. So the key lock cylinder is going to be retaining this upper portion. So to get that out, you'll need to turn it to the on position. And then you'll need to come underneath. And there's... That little button right there. So that'll take out the whole key cylinder. Once you get that lock cylinder out, You can just remove that upper. The multifunction switch. So that's this whole assembly right here. And what we're looking for is a green wire. Now I gotta remember it's this wire right here on mine. 2003 Ford Excursion. I've also done this on my 2001 Sport Track. Um, any of the Fords that have this multifunction, they, do, they have the wiring set up the same way. So this solid green wire. This is a feed from the brake pedal. I like to take a tool and remove the pin so that way anybody can always put it back in and get it back to how it should be instead of having to splice it back together. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect that so that way when your turn signal's on you're only getting a left turn signal uh, sent to the rear left light and a right. So you'll effectively by taking this wire out you'll lose your brake lights to the rear and I'll show you how to resolve that issue later. But effectively right now, what we're doing, taking the green wire out, which is the brake feed to the turn signals, if that's the simplest way to explain it. So it's not super easy to undo the wire without just cutting it. But what you need to do is you'll need to end up popping this out. And what that does is it holds the pins in so that way the electrical connector doesn't just pull out on its own. So it locks the pin that holds it in. Now the pin that holds it in is on the bottom. So what you'll need to do is you need to use a tiny little pick or a sewing needle 
And what you'll do is you'll push it in underneath the wire and that allows the wire to come out. So again, um, on that plug, you'll need to go underneath the wire to push that plastic clip down to pull this out. Now, what I'm gonna do is take just a teeny bit of heat shrink and go over this to protect it so it doesn't ground out. I'll leave that in this area, put this clip back in. Oh, I need to put the connector back on it. This will keep the pins from coming out. So this I can already go ahead and redo. And we got our hazards going. So the next step is just to heat shrink this and then cover all this back up. All right, cap that in, so let it seal together. There we go, so that is good and done. We'll go ahead and just keep that hidden. We'll go ahead and put all the cover panel pieces back on and everything else is at the back of the car. This is what the wiring change has done. Go ahead and hit the brake. So now you can see we only have the high mount third brake light, the brakes at the corners aren't working because we've disconnected that wire at the multifunction switch. Okay, let off, turn the running lights on. All right, so now you can see, I've got the bulbs out, so you've got just the, the parking lights now, no brakes. All right, turn it off. So now we're gonna go ahead and wire. This is gonna be effectively what we're gonna be working for. Taking a wire from the third brake light, that's gonna be the feed for now our lights from the third brake down to each of the corners for our brakes. And then just rewiring the plugs to have that independent yellow turn into the right socket. So this right here is the wiring for the third brake light, high mount brake light. What we're gonna to need to do is access that wiring and then run a feed to each of the corners. So we'll go ahead and take this panel down. Comes down pretty easy. There's just these little clips that go into right there. So it'll just pull straight down. And then we'll need to access up here that wiring. So a few little things to get to it. Here's how to remove this side panel. There's just a little piece of Velcro right here that attaches right here. So that's nothing, just pull that down. However, you've got this metal retaining clip right here. You've got an insert director right there, a little clip right here, and a guide pin right here. So the guide pin goes in here. That piece right here will clip into there. You can see the two tabs on top and bottom, so that slides into that. And then that metal clip goes into here. So once you pull down the Velcro from the top, you're going to hold onto that piece and move it this way. So you'll move it towards the center of the car. Don't force it this way, don't force it back, um, but it's gonna slide out this way. So you can go ahead and see, I've already got a green wire. Now if it connects up in here, that green wire, you probably can't see back. You'll have to take the headliner down a little bit, tap into it, use your test lead, and then run your green wire down. And then there's actually an area where you can feed through right here with the, uh, the rubber grommet for the other ones. I went ahead and added some plugs from the junkyard to add more spots to this, so I'm gonna run mine through this directly. So here is the wiring for the harnesses. This is our original reverse light, so we don't mess with that at all. This was the original brake tail and turn, so we had a ground, we had a brown running light, and we had an orange turn brake. So what we did is we tapped into the black ground to add another feed to the ground of our turn signal. The turn signal wire, the orange one, we cut and then tapped that into the turn of the new plug. So now we've got the turn signal plug completely wired. Our orange original turn signal feed and a spliced ground go to the turn signal. So now for the brake, we don't need to mess with the ground other than adding the tap for the turn. The brown is for the running light, the tail light, so we don't mess with that at all. 
And then for the um, orange, we now need to tap that into the line that we ran all the way up to our third brake light. So that will need to come down however you get it to here. You're going to tap into what was the orange, at least on my 2003 Ford Excursion. So that'll bring you a brake light to this outlet. You're going to then need to tap into this and run it over to the other side to get your left. Um, some people have done a wire down each side, um, however you want to do it, either from the top, down on both sides, or just down to one, and then run it over to the other one. But again, reverse we don't mess with. The original three wire brake tail turn, we just tap into the ground, run it to the turn, cut the orange turn feed from the multifunction switch, hook that up, and then now we just tap in our third brake light wire to what was the old one. And then running a jumper, oh, whoops, running a jumper over to the other one. So that is the wiring that you need to do for the tricolor rear. So fairly simple. All right, so this is all put back together. I got the hazards on just so you can see each side working. And again, this is going to be the tricolor mod for the amber turn signals on the excursion. That's what we've got. The one thing that's a drawback, and I will say uh, there is um, an unintended consequence of changing out for the amber turn. When you've got your trailer tow plug, you've got factory of four pin and a seven pin. Because these systems ran off of the um, three wire tail brake turn stop, or, or tail stop turn, this no longer has that function of tail stop and turn. Now you're only getting tail and turn. Uh, one other option, if you wanted to do the single convert signal converter box, instead of doing the steering column uh, cut wire and the multifunction switch, you could do a signal converter box back here and then run it to each of the likes. Um, that would retain your factory wiring as well. Uh, one of the unintended consequences of doing the single converter to get the ambers up here is you would have a red hazard and you would have the yellow turn just because of the way that the diodes are in those little signal converter boxes. So this I think is the most um, hardy in application and be able to retain especially the yellow hazard. One thing to note is if you don't want to replace the whole tri-color, the original housing has that red. The whole upper is red with only the tail stop in the middle and then the reverse in the bottom. If you want, you can still utilize that same um, light housing. You would just have to take your reverse um, socket and change that to a switchback. So you would have to um, use a bulb that is white and then changes to yellow on turn signal and just rewire um, for just that socket there. So you could take the same socket that fixed the tail stop turn and then put one in the reverse housing and then just instead of running the wires up to this new one here, you would run it to that three wire um, socket in the bottom. And then when you have reverse on, the white would be on. And when you have your turn signal on, that switchback bulb would then light up yellow. And it's an LED, you can't get that in a halogen. So you can get a switchback LED bulb and that way you can still get that amber turn um, without having to change the whole housing. I just happen to like the whole yellow, red, white um, housing. Thank you.